I don't believe that they should pass on Lonzo because I don't believe they should hold Lonzo accountable for what his father uh, does. Uh, his father obviously is very outspoken. Uh, he doesn't mind bringing attention to himself. He believes that's assisting his son. His mentality, as he has said to us on this show, is that the NCAA, sneaker companies and the like, uh, never hesitate to exploit the, the young talent that exists out there. What's wrong with a father taking advantage of that uh, with, with his son on behalf of the entire family? Why should they be allowed to do it and he not? I think that makes sense, even though, again, there are things that he has done that I wouldn't do. Having said all of that, Max, I need to take this a step further in this regard. I'm watching a lot of folks out there uh, going off about LeVar Ball. I'm one of those people who believes that he needs to chill out, be a bit more quiet, and not go about bringing the attention to his son that he's bringing because you could be doing your son harm. I've said that on many occasions. However, I would never go as far as some people are going to come across as, like, as if he's not a good dad, that he hasn't been a great provider, that he hasn't been a tremendous influence uh, in the life of his son, because you have a lot of kids out there who pray every day that they had a father who believed in them the way this man believes in his son. I do not agree with some of his tactics, as he knows, as everybody knows, because I've said it to his face right on this show. I've said it on radio and television. But I would never denigrate him as a man or as a father. You can have a problem with somebody, what somebody specifically does, without engaging in a character assassination that I have seen people engage in when it comes to him. He doesn't do everything right. He got him trouble yesterday, you know, on, 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 on FS1 with some of the things that he said. He had no business saying those things that he said, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but at the same time, the things that have been said about him are, are equally, if, equally offensive, if not more so. And I think it's important to say that. Well, look, LeVar Ball speaks as though uh, the cameras aren't rolling. That's what makes him interesting. Um, but because he does that, he also reveals some things about himself. For example, um, a strategy to not intentionally not sell sneakers to women. Women have feet too, you know. Half the feet in the world are, are, are owned by women. Not smart. And so maybe not, not a great idea. Not a great idea to immediately alienate 50% potentially of the marketplace. But okay, that's, you know, that's his choice. Um, should the Lakers draft LeVar Ball, excuse me, Freudian slip, maybe not even do Freudian. Lonzo Ball, if he's still there at two, the answer is absolutely yes, they have to. Because if they believe that he is comparably talented, look, if they think that someone else who's not there, let's say Fultz doesn't get taken and neither does Ball with the number one pick for some reason, and they just think Fultz is just clearly better than, than Lonzo, okay. But if they think it's close between Lonzo and someone else, Far from saying, well, LeVar means that you don't take Lonzo. No, actually, you got to take Lonzo. Because originally, the late great Dr. Jerry Buss, the greatest owner in the, in the history of American team sports, by far, by far, it's not close. Apologies to George Steinbrenner. I grew up a Yankees fan. It's not close. Dr. Jerry Buss had this dream that not only were the Lakers going to win championships instead of just lose to the Celtics in the finals, which, you know, 10 championships since he bought the team, um, but that they would do it in an exciting way, that they would be showtime. So hard to do that, Stephen A., because usually as soon as you take the eye, your eye off the ball, you know, in terms of winning, because you want to win with style all of a sudden, well, now you're not going to win. It's hard enough to win, period. Don't worry about everything else. But the late, great Dr. Jerry Buss was able to do both. And here you have a guard in, these, in this draft who is from the area, who went to UCLA, the storied franchise, or, or sorry, program in the history of college basketball, who wants to play for the purple and gold, wants to play for the Lakers, who has a skill set, which if it's not reminiscent of magic, which it is in some ways, he's a big guard, he's a brilliant passer, it's at least Penny Hardaway or Jason Kidd or someone like that, and he gives you the chance, not just because of the off-the-court stuff with his dad and the talking and the headlines and everything, though that's something, that's not nothing. He gives you the chance, if he fulfills his potential, to not only help you win, but to win with style, which is what the Lakers are really ultimately always hoping for. And if you're Magic Johnson, you ain't going to pass that up. You can't. 
Well, you can't pass it up, number one, because it's a point guard and you don't have much faith in D'Angelo Russell, who they believe is devoid of leadership. Numerous sources told me throughout this season that they are fed up with D'Angelo because they really, really have a problem with his lack of leadership. They know that he can play. They don't know whether he's star power, but they know that he can play. What their problem is is that when you talk about being a point guard in L.A., reminiscent of Showtime and what have you, and you see an individual that doesn't seem capable of galvanizing the troops around him and getting everybody to be as one and having that it factor, they go down the block to Westwood at UCLA, and that's all you heard about with Lonzo Ball. You heard about his leadership ability, how guys loved playing with him, how they looked forward to playing with him and watching him put on a show because usually his greatness facilitated and elevated their level of play because they were beneficiaries of his greatness because of what he would do in terms of feeding them the basketball and what have you. You're Irvin Magic Johnson. That is exactly what you're looking for. I had one of my boys, Champ, talk to me about how they need to take Josh Jackson because Josh Jackson has the potential to be an MJ or a Kobe. I, I like him a lot out of Kansas. I got to see that to believe that. I, but I do believe right. the one franchise that absolutely positively cannot pass on Lonzo, it's L.A. Because, Max, we got to stop talking about, um, you know, Showtime or people wanting to put on the show and getting style points as if it's a bad thing. We are in professional sports is a business. It's a multi-billion dollar establishment. What helped make it that way, Max? Showtime. Magic. It wasn't just yeah. the skills Look, of magic, just worthy, and all of those. It was a show.